Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we thought it would be fun to answer the most Googled parenting questions. So we've done some research and some of them are very funny. So we're gonna do like our take on it. I thought it would be fun to have Matt here as well as like a dad perspective. And obviously we're not experts. We are just parents. Well, <laughs> um, so we're just gonna give you like our take on these questions. Some of them I definitely know the answer to. Some of them I've actually Googled myself. And some of them people what should ones? not be Googling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll just get into it. The first most Googled parenting question is, what are the early signs of pregnancy? Okay, so. <laughs> so I'll answer this one. I'll tell you my signs anyway, but I can see why this is like the most Googled question because when you're trying to conceive, it's all you think about and any little like twinge, you're like, and we're pregnant. Um, so for me, the first thing I noticed was changes in my breasts like very tender <laughs> and like just you could just tell like a bit of pain like even before I'd missed my period that was a big sign another one um, is just extreme tiredness to the point where at night if you're watching TV I'd actually fall asleep on the couch which I would never do miss that normally <laughs> a lot of people feel sick I had morning sickness um, almost more in the first 12 weeks than any other point in my pregnancy so feeling sick um, which isn't nice, but it's also a really good thing because I would always think, oh, it's a strong pregnancy. I feel really sick. So for me, those are the early signs. The next question is a bit more fun and one I've probably Googled as well. It is, can pregnant women have McFlurries? It's pretty important. <laughs> yeah. The amount of times you ask me to have them. Might be craving them. Um, so, pregnant women. You can't. No, we can't. Why can't you, Emily? <laughs> Dr. Emily. So you can't, well, doctors recommend that you don't have any soft ice cream, like from a ice cream truck or anything, because the pipes aren't cleaned well enough. Um, they don't think to stop like all parasites. So obviously when you're pregnant, doctors want to avoid you getting like violently sick. That's why they say, don't have McFlurries and also don't have any raw meat, um, pate, blue cheese, anything that could have that parasite. Don't also. eat any dog poo. Yeah, you can't um, change kitty litter. Like, or eat dog poo. Yeah, or eat dog poo. That was one of your cravings. <laughs> you can't eat Meow. cat poo because cat poo can actually have this parasite on it as well. So it causes, I looked this up, it causes an infection called toxoplasmosis and it can make you really sick and that can be found on raw meats, undercooked meats, goat's milk, um, soil, cat poo and everything. So makes sense, it's it? actually true that you can't change. But if you have cat and you're litter. pregnant, no, if you're, don't freak out. Yeah, it's fine because I actually ate, I craved smoked salmon when I was pregnant yeah. and I asked my doctor, I was like, I've just really want to eat smoked salmon, is that okay? And she was like, to be honest, in the UK, it's fine. Like, don't worry about it. But they don't really recommend that you eat like parma ham, like shellfish that's not been cooked. And that was another question. Um, can pregnant women eat prawns? So again, you can eat prawns, but they have to be cooked. You, you had can't. a craving with one of them, I think, didn't you, for prawns? I just love to like, yeah, like smoked salmon and... Yeah. You like those it's things It's funny anyway. how like when you're pregnant though, you do fancy all the things you shouldn't really have. Yeah, that's You're like, oh, why. I just have... And you're like, oh no, I can't. And then you're like, oh, I really want some pate. Like you never normally yeah. eat it. What is free range parenting? So I wasn't sure, but you can kind of guess from the title, but I looked it up. So free range parenting is giving your children lots of independence and getting them to like problem solve themselves and like work things out. And there's this one woman in New York who famously let her nine year old, so Fraser's age, our eldest, let him find his way home on the New York subways by himself. And she it actually was a massive backlash. She got loads of hate for it. She wrote an article about it. Um, that just gives me so much fear. Yeah, like, there's parents Fraser, out there that, I mean, like, that's, that's extreme. Obviously, I mean, I, that's obviously extreme. that's the, extreme end yeah. of the scale and yeah. to be honest Fraser probably could do it 
But I think he'd probably cry the whole way through. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. quite scary. Um, I think this um, the label has been given by someone that is a free range parenter because they've glorified it. Because free, like free, really free range nice. is a good thing, right? It's what we're obsessed with at the moment. Um, but, but each their own. Everyone parents differently, and um, yeah. whatever works for your children and works for you. you know what I, mean? I, I, I get it. Like giving them a bit of independence that is good. Cause it's going to build up their confidence. Yeah. It's going to make them work things out for themselves and stuff. But. I don't think I am a free range parent. No. At all. <laughs> but the next question was, um, what is attachment parenting? So So I'm guessing this was labelled by the same person that name labelled free range parenting. Or they don't have children. Because then <laughs> attachment makes it sound like you've got an issue, yet it shouldn't be an issue that you want to be a parent and you want to be close to your children. So Yeah. No, so but attachment parent, again, I didn't know the label, but I think I was an attachment parent was well because when they're little like i loved baby wearing i did extended breastfeeding we co-sleep with our kids it's not a big deal but i didn't do any of those things to be an attachment parent i just did what felt right yeah. and i did loads of research about baby wearing before we had them and there's all these benefits and it just made sense it's like they're in your tummy and then they're like what they're just not on you at all so it's kind of like they're still in your tummy yeah. in a way but like they're on you and they're near their food source and what really got me was they said 42 percent of babies that are worn like they cry less or they cry 42 percent less because you're just there and they're warm and they hear your heart and all of those things so i was like i'm gonna baby wear loved that and then i just breastfed for as long as felt right so it was like two years with jackson um, and then what was the other one? Co-sleeping. So it's funny actually, we didn't actually co-sleep when they were babies. No. We were too scared to co-sleep, but we have like started co-sleeping with each of them as they've come out of a crib. Yeah. So as soon as the side comes off the crib, they just walk into our bed and we just let them. Yeah. And it's been really nice. Yeah, exactly. Like he, I think if it's an issue with either of you, not wanting that, I get that. But both of us have been like, Oh, it's, it's actually not going to really last nice. forever. No, because yeah. then Fraser stopped when he was seven, uh, which made way for Caleb coming in. Yeah. And now Jackson's in. And we just like it. Yeah. So I think we are kind of like attachment parents. Stops baby think, number four. I think, attach <laughs> I think attachment is just like you want to be close with them. Yeah. And I mean, you can take that to, no a, right to the extreme, can't like, you? You do what suits you. Um, I don't no. think these things should be labelled. It's like yeah, you're just surviving, aren't you? And uh, yeah, you have to do what, whatever you. Yeah, because yeah, some people are like you're creating a rod for your own back, letting them in your beds, and it's like, well, Fraser stopped at I seven. Was, I was wrapped up in cotton. They're wool. not going to be in your bed till they're twenty-one. No, with their girlfriend. <laughs> Then we you hope. can start giving me yeah. some hate. <laughs> then you can give me hate. Yeah. Um, and then the next one is what is helicopter parenting? So again, a nice label for yeah. a, a, not a free range parent. <laughs> yeah. So helicopter parent is what it sounds. It's when you hover over your child and you're involved in like everything they do. I joked that I was a helicopter parent because I like to be quite involved. But last night- I didn't night, laugh at it. I didn't say, oh my God. Well, I thought, I thought, you're a helicopter I thought parent. you probably are. I didn't know. Well, no, I think I probably am because I'm quite overprotective, but for a good reason. I can't believe you want you protective of your children. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think you can be too protective of your kids. Like they're your kids. Um, but I should imagine there's some extreme examples. To make though. sure I wasn't like a proper helicopter parent, there was this little quiz on Google. So I did it last night and I was like, oh no, not all of the 10 questions I actually said no to. So they were things like, would you wake up in the middle of the night and, and rewrite your son's English essay? I would never do that. It was like, would you let your child play at a park that didn't have like soft mulch or like, you know, like padding? And I was like, of course, like my kids fall over the time. What about that time though so, when you took your own soft padding? <laughs> So I think I'm not like you kind of I think a bit of that is is a good thing. Yeah, like my what did my mum say? She said like you can't love a child too much. No. They only worry about the kids that aren't loved enough. Like you can't like but I do get it. It's like, easy to say to someone you need to chill out, but it's like that's it, it's almost like anything. The next most Googled parenting question is is parenting hard? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. But I think if you're the sort of person that is asking Google about parenting, <laughs> I'm not sure being a parent is for you. <laughs> That's a bit hard. Parenting is the hardest thing you ever do, though. 
Yeah, so no, it, yeah it's a, but it's the most rewarding. That's it why is it's the best. It's like anything thing. in life, though, isn't it? You, yeah, I mean, anything worth doing is hard, and I think it's really hard because it's not only like physically, like you know, you've got to be pregnant, you got the birth, and like all that physical pain and everything, but then it's also like really emotionally hard. Yeah, and yeah. And then you've also got to raise this little person to be like a nice human. Yeah. That's quite hard. And we're really fortunate because obviously, touch wood, do you know what I mean? We've, like, we've been really lucky with our three boys. Yeah. And, um, but it's still some hard. Challenge. Yeah, exactly. Like, and that's still like the most healthy. challenging thing we've ever, ever done. And we've, mm. we've had it easy, as it were. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It is hard, but it is hard, but it's worth it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't, I don't really think of, think about the hard times. You do have hard no. times, but I don't. You, we don't dwell on them. Do you know what I mean? As much as you have a day, like, oh my god, like get them to bed. Yeah, like, you're gonna get that every day. Um, mm. We don't really. Do you know what I mean? No, we, just, we try to focus on like. We don't ever look yeah. back on our day and go, oh, what a nightmare he was. Which we didn't have them. Yeah, which we didn't have them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. But you then, never as well, regret. as always, well, I say to people, the hardest thing about being parents and being a couple is you don't know until you have children what you're actually like with them you like to think you're going to be a good parent mm. um, you like to think that your partner's going to be a good parent but you learn so Don't much actually. about each other when you become parents and uh, mm. it either makes or, break, or breaks you yeah sad truth but, um, yeah definitely yeah we're in that in we've just turned loads of people off <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> having, yeah. having kids <laughs> the next question is quite an interesting one it is how much does it cost to raise a child and I think I would have been very interested in this when we started having children. Yeah. Like I found in a notebook the other day, like this list um, that I made of like what we would need and how much each thing would cost if we had a baby. Cause I was like, really wanted to have a baby. Yeah. We got married when we were 26 and then had a Fraser when I was 27. And um, it was like, we were probably not in the right financial place. To have you a never baby. are, you can never afford it. No, so I think like, if you have a baby, it will work itself out. You don't know where you'll be in five years. We had zero money. We we're in a one bed flat. Still got pregnant, had Fraser. It all worked out. People gifted us buggies mm. and cots. And and then, the, you know, like work goes well or this happens. And, yeah, you find and actually, purpose in what you do. you stop going out. So you're not spending money on those things. You're spending it on him. And I think we saved money when we first had a baby, didn't we? Yeah, we had we quite a good social life. Weekend. We spent all that money going out and then we obviously had to stop that. Yeah. But Google says the average cost of having a baby nowadays, it costs you £230,000 um, from baby to 21 years old. Um, so they are breaking that down as £10,000 a year, £910 a month, and £30 a day. Like the £30 a day does sound about right. But they're saying the majority of that cost is from zero to four years old because of childcare costs. And I can totally see that. Like we've always had quite a big childcare bill because we've always worked. Yeah. And we've actually spaced our children's ages because of that. Like, so we could have never afforded two children in childcare together. But then once one was in nursery, we wouldn't have wanted to take them out when the second baby came. So we waited for like, you know, you get the three hours when they're three yeah so we've literally had our babies because of costs <laughs> luckily we could be like we want a baby now and it happened yeah, yeah, yeah. um but so that is the average cost but a lot of the they do like a breakdown maybe i can make a whole video on like the things that you need when you're a baby and things that you don't need so they've done a breakdown like the things that you would buy and like again there were things that we just got for free secondhand stuff can you be know. really really good um you know, just a few white baby grows. You don't need all the rubbish. When you think about stuff we bought, the car seats, the, the oh, cots, yeah. or whatever, we, they've all used it. We've like, That's we've really. all be handed down. Yeah. Yeah. So, so glad we did it when we didn't have money because um, mm. you don't get carried away. Oh. The next most Googled parenting question is Are babies born with kneecaps? So I didn't know the answer to this. So I just looked it up, and babies don't have kneecaps. They just have cartilage, but it doesn't actually go hard into like a kneecap until they're four years old. Wow. So I can't believe it, but that would explain why babies are so like bendy and yeah. like, yeah, crazy. The next most Googled parenting question is, are parenting classes worth it? No. no, no. <laughs> 
So we did you, all of them. You mean like antenatal, like yeah, NCT? Yeah, I, I think that's what they mean. Because yeah, well, obviously there is a cost to some of those classes. So I think mm. some people are like, do I want to spend the money? Do you want to pay to get some new friends? Basically. Or do you want to get the free ones? <laughs> yeah, because we did. We did the paid ones, but yeah. only for the first child, because that was when we cared. Um... <laughs> About those sort of things. Yeah, no, no we, you hear we people were so that, excited. Yeah, you hear people that are like best friends with all of their, their parents in group class, mm. um, which is really sweet. We didn't quite get that. We've got a couple of friends we've still kept. Yeah. We all stayed in touch for a few, the first few years because yeah, obviously like, it was the first, and it was all the milestones, first, second, third birthdays. Yeah. And then people start having more kids, and it's like, we didn't yeah. even talk about going on a parenting class, did we? On a, like Not a, with Caleb and Jackson. Because you don't necessarily, well, personally, I don't think we learned anything on the yeah, classes they, that we didn't know or we couldn't find on Google. Yeah, look, they do teach you like how to change a nappy, how to hold your baby, yeah. all about the birth. I, felt I think birth... YouTube's more useful for all those things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, so yeah, I think you were like, oh, like didn't feel like the information was good. No, but, but it was, for me, the friendships social. were like someone to have coffee with. Invaluable. We've gone back there. Oh God! <laughs> oh no! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Oh, the coffee. <laughs> we're talking about parenting groups. <laughs> so for me, yeah, all the mums and stuff. Yeah, no, were it was nice. amazing. Because yeah. in the first year, all the dads are working hard. Like it was yeah. nice for you to. No, but it I'm is. I'm joking. <laughs> No, but I didn't actually work then. Like on my first maternity leave, I had the whole year off. It was amazing. Yeah. And um, yeah, every single week I'd meet yeah, up you, with. It's crazy because you have more guilt then. I was just going off key over here. But, yeah. You know, but I, I'd recommend it. I think go in there you, with an open you, mind. Yeah, I think if you can afford it, do it because no, there's, free, there's a free one anyway, and I hear lots of people that go on those. Is there and a they, free one? Yeah. Oh. There's an NHS one. Um, the next question kind of leads into this one and it is does parenting get easier so i can imagine even me googling this in the early days because yeah, the first like 12 sleep weeks deprived yeah with your first baby the first 12 weeks i found so difficult because obviously your body's just been through this crazy change and now you also have to be awake 24 7 and all the emotion and your breastfeeding yeah. and you're sweating and you're like oh like the first 12 weeks i found really really hard and mm. whenever i get like mums that message me on instagram or on here i'm like it will get so much easier yeah. from 12 weeks yeah. i felt like then we were like they're napping it's the sleep deprivation i can only talk from a father's point of view obviously you have to go through a hell of a lot more yeah. but as a dad like Obviously, you still chip in, especially with the first. I know it sounds silly because when the second one comes along, yeah, it's you like, sort you, of know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but it's a sleep deprivation, and you again, you don't know how you do. You've never had sleep deprivation like it. Do you know what I mean? Unless you've, yeah, do you know I mean, been stranded somewhere. Yeah, like and, loads of people when you're pregnant, they're like get all your sleep now, and you're like, yeah, yeah. and you just can't be prepared. Like it's really no. hard for an adult to wake up every two hours and be yeah. awake and you then probably, you probably, try to go back to sleep it's, it's you've probably been out all night once and then gone to work or something and think you're a hero and then the next night you, that night you get home from work and you sleep from six till six the next day well you don't mm. get that do you know what I mean you have like months of you you, you, yeah. you might go a week where you've only having three four hours sleep every night and um yeah like, you don't know it's not healthy no you know I mean? it's not it's not good for you but but then 12 from, weeks and i think that's why we love routines because i've my eight weeks we started like the bedtime routine and then, yeah, it got so much easier from 12 weeks when they were feeding at a normal, like, similar sorts of times, napping at similar sorts of times. You could, like, and you were feeling better, like, over the birth a bit more. Yeah. So, yeah. The next question is how to be a happier parent. So I've made quite a few videos about this, which I will link down below if you want to see it, like, in more detail. Um, but it makes me sad that people like so many people are googling yeah, this because like it is really hard isn't it? yeah, yeah. and i think not... it's so hard when you don't have loads of support because the main thing would be like to have a tiny bit of time like away like have a shower yeah. <laughs> to like take some time out but sometimes that's impossible like it was for us yeah um, i'd also say don't like on social media as well like on yeah. youtube and instagram like obviously people can put out there what they they want to be put the out best. there do you know what I mean? so don't think just, like they, they are happy all the time don't get me wrong like we're but like, we're really happy and we have been as parents yeah, as well but, but obviously it's edited yeah don't mm. feel alone i think um yeah it's something that everyone goes through and uh, like i said you don't know until you have children how you're going to react so you do need to talk to people yeah um, the next one is how to raise successful kids and 
<laughs> me and Matt were talking about this before. And I was like, it's quite worrying that people are like Googling that. Like, mm. I, I'm sure there's so many books on how to raise a successful kid. Yeah. But then I was like, define successful. Like for us, you know, I just want the boys to grow up and be happy and healthy and like stable and like whatever yeah. they want to do. Well, then we looked at how we were brought up and we were both brought up fairly differently. Or yeah. def- we've got different backgrounds, I'm going to say fairly differently. We've got different yeah. backgrounds and um. I don't think it's made that much of no. a difference. I think it's about the person that you create, and then it's it's all good having ambition, but that's their ambition, so that they can decide that. Obviously, yeah. you can encourage it once they decide what they want to do a little bit later in life. Yeah. But as for now, obviously, just it's their like health is the number one, and then and then just that they're happy. And yeah. I think there's it's so life, much isn't pressure it? though, like yeah. all the clubs you can do now, all the things you can do, all the tutoring, all the extra. And I know, like. I was terrible with Fraser. I was like, doing something every single day. Yeah. Jimmy, we're doing all this stuff. But then actually, like, for Fraser, all he wants to do is be a footballer. So some people would say that's maybe not a, like, sensible dream. Yeah, but he's a nine-year-old boy, do you know what I mean? So for now, it's it's actually a really nice ambition to have, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I feel like we just do everything for that. Sometimes Um, life as well, it's not about doing it it's about having the ambition do you know what I mean yeah. to get there and the dream as well um, mm. I think success I think people mean financially as well or, or they don't or me yeah I felt like oh that's like they want them to be a doctor yeah yeah they want them to, yeah, 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 they want to have a good profession which obviously you, you want the best for your children mm. um, and I think that our worry is that our kids are growing up into a world where like financially things aren't going to be easy no matter what they do yeah, do you know what I mean it's like, it's so hard, hard to get now. on the ladder like well yeah, yeah. but then yeah. we're obsessed with or property anyway as a country so those are the most googled parenting questions that we researched online i do actually have more but i think that this video is getting quite long now but if you liked this type of video let us know and we'll answer the other 10 or so that i've got there and yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this like chattier type video on a friday and um i'll see you in my next one bye